You know, the Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that none is righteous, no, not one. We all fail and we all make mistakes and we all mess up. And I just feel very led to remind somebody today of what Romans chapter 8, 1 and 2 says. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. In the previous chapter, Paul says, the things I want to do, I cannot do, but the things I don't want to do are the things I I do. He's talking about wrestling between this flesh and between the spirit. And guys, sometimes we don't always get it right. I don't always get it right. You don't always get it right. But the enemy is right there waiting almost every time to condemn you, to beat you down and tell you everything that you are not. And I want to remind you that Jesus is not condemning you. If you are in Christ, there is no condemnation, no matter what you have done or no matter where you are at. And that is the enemy that is coming against you. That is the enemy who is telling you, you are a piece. You're done. You're washed up. God can't use you now. You're useless. He's going to toss you to the side. That's not how our God works. That's not how our Father is. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to a obey Christ. So when the enemy wants to whisper those things in our mind and tell us everything that we are not, to tell us that God is done with you, you've gone too far, you've messed up one too many times. Y'all, I want to show you how you can quote scripture. You read verses like 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. And you recite these things, say them out loud. Say 2 Timothy 1, 7 out loud. For God gave us not a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. And this word translates to self-control of the mind or self-control of our thoughts. So we throw that out. Say, devil, I'm not going to listen to that thought. I know who I am in Christ. And when you do that, you are taking every thought captive to obey Christ. You say, I know what the word says. I know who I am. I know Galatians 2.20 that says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I, Adam, who live, but it's Christ in me. So when the father looks at me, he sees the son, the blood has covered me because of what Jesus did on the cross, not because of my good behavior, not because of my works, not because I earned it. It's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. That is the new man. And Lord, I'm sorry that I failed you. I repent. I see the error of my ways and I'm going to turn back towards you, God, and I'm going to run and chase after you now. And my friend, the enemy hates that. He absolutely hates that. He wants you to sit in that place and start to feel bad for yourself. He wants you to start to believe that lie because that is the beginning of deception. He wants to lead you down that road of feeling like you're not enough, of feeling like God can never use you, of feeling like you are not worthy, that you don't even want to go to church, that you don't even want to open your Bible anymore, that you don't even want to talk to him in prayer. That's what sin does. It tries to separate and that's what the lies of the enemy do does. It tries to shut you down and shut you off. Instead of bringing you to the Lord, he tries to separate you from God. Do you understand? So it's so important that we go back to the word of God. Even when you are feeling at your lowest of lows, you've done the worst thing that you have ever done. I know how this feels, my friend. I've screwed up so many times in my life, more than I can count. But you can always go back and say, if you are in Christ, there's no condemnation. There is no condemnation. The Holy Spirit is not the one condemning you. The Holy Spirit is not the one beating you down. 
That is not the heart of God. That is not the heart of the Father. Rather, he's saying, come back to me. You see the error of your ways. You see what happened. You see, you've repented. You've asked for forgiveness. Now come back and let's get back on track and let's get back out there and do it again, right? That's the heart of God. He is a loving father. Think about the story of the prodigal son. When he comes home, what does dad do? Does he beat him? Does he chastise him? Does he punish him? Does he say, why did you run off? Why did you blow all that money? Why did you sleep with all those women? Why did you do all that? No. He put a ring on his hand. He put his coat on him, killed the fatted calf, and threw him a party. That is the heart of our God. He rejoices when we come back to him. So any other voice that tries to condemn you, put you down, say you're washed up, you're done, you are not enough, that's it, God's had it with you, my friend, that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is the beginning of deception where the enemy is trying to lead you away from the word of God. He's trying to lead you away from secret place time. He's trying to lead you away from the Lord and calls that divide to begin and calls that separation to begin. And it's subtle and we don't always see it and we don't always recognize it. But you have to be even more diligent. Everything in you is screaming. Everything feels shameful and dirty, but you have to let it go and release it at the cross because Jesus Jesus already died and covered you in that area, my friend. This is heavy on my heart today, y'all, and I have felt this. I know what this feels like. It's something I still fight, and I will fight until the day I die, and so will you. And I just want to encourage you today. At the time you feel like stepping away, in the time you feel like isolating and secluding, I'm telling you to press in. Do the opposite. Press in. Go in harder. Read more. Pray more. Pursue the Lord more. Worship more. Start singing, just belting out worship and praise. And I guarantee you, my friend, that thing will break off of you in Jesus' name. It will break off. Just pour over the scriptures. Let it pour over you. Read Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He loves you. He's a good God and a good father. And I'm encouraging you to press into him today. Don't run away. Go towards him, my friend. And that is the act of repentance. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it and hit like on the video that helps YouTube spread this out to more people. But thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.